Thank you. Tonight, my presentation is going to demonstrate that jazz great Miles Davis actually used agile management skills to develop his seminal album, Bitches Brew. For those who don't know who Miles was, Miles was the Picasso of jazz. Like Picasso, he had went through multiple periods. He was the inventor of many jazz styles, culminating in the invention of jazz rock fusion in the uh, late 60s. I'm gonna show that Miles was agile in two ways. First, Miles actually sprinted his record releases to evolve his exploration of jazz rock fusion. And he uh, incrementally evolved his instrumentation and the music idiom. Secondly, in actually recording Bitches Brew, Miles actually built a self-managed team and actually used something akin to Scrum during the studio recording to maximize team velocity and innovation. So for those of you in the house who are not geeks, Scrum with Agile involves having uh, iterative sprints, which are a time-boxed feature release methodology that allows you to uh, deliver on time. And Scrum is a daily management technique that maximizes velocity and innovation. So let's go through the albums. His prototype album was Nefertiti in mid-67. It was, it was his last full jazz album. And there was no electric instrumentation. Martha, turn it up a little. But he was playing with something called tone centers, which are more African and much more roots oriented, closer to rock. His second album, Miles in the Sky, was his first use of electric instrumentation. He had an electric bass and piano, and he had actually a first rock rhythm, but he only used it for a couple of tunes. The next, tune, the next album was Feet of Kilimanjaro, and this was his, really his first full exp exploration of fusion. So he really extended the use of uh, electric instrumentation and also started to use these tone centers more. His beta was In a Silent Way, and this was his first real complete fusion album where he integrated rock rhythms, electric instrumentation, tone centers with jazz improvisation. It was also his first use of the studio as an instrument itself where he constructed tracks much like the Beatles and the Beach Boys were doing at that time. He also had sections of instruments, like in rock music you have multiple guitars and keyboards, and that was a first for him in jazz. And finally, the product release, Bitches Brew. Bitches Brew was the penultimate fusion album. It was probably actually the most controversial and maybe the most important album, jazz album in the 70s. And out of Bitches Brew came every famous fusion group. Weather Report, Chick Corea's Return to Forever, Herbie Hancock's Headhunters, and Mahavishnu Orchestra. All had at least two members who played on Bitches Brew. Miles also started to use electric effects as well. Turn it up just a little more for me. So this is a timeline that demonstrates the roll up to the product release. And you can see he actually had a prototype, he had a couple of sprints, he had a beta release, and then the product release, all in time boxed sequential releases. This is what's called a feature burn down chart. Okay. The, front graph, the front graph shows the number of rock musicians that he used per album, per track, and the back graph shows the number of rock music features that he used per album, per track. Now let's talk about the recording of Bitches Brew. So Miles's quoted user story for Bitches Brew was that he wanted to expand in a silent way, but add a lot more musicians and improvisation. And the challenge was how does he do manage many more people? So the agile solution is to use self-managed teams. You have to hire the right mix of skill and wisdom, and then you have to provide maximal support to the team with minimal management structure. Okay, and actually this is an actual quote that Miles said. He said, I, let the, I listen to what the team tells me, and they tell me what they can do. This is a plot of all the members who played on Bitches Brew. The horizontal axis is experience with rock music, the vertical is number of recordings. And you can see that Miles actually focused a bunch of rock hits and experienced musicians. Okay? Miles had one rehearsal for the recording of Bitches Brew. Rather, what he relied on was a plan, execute, evaluate cycle during the recording. Okay, and letting his team members, you know, they would play a bit and then just let his team members feedback. Listen, turn it up. <laughs> oh, it didn't happen. But anyway, you can actually hear Miles during the recording of Bitches Brew give key cues. So that's my talk. Miles used iterative album releases to iterate to get to jazz rock fusion. Thank you. <laughs>